Are you good? Oh. Oh, hi. Oh. Hi. Are you smiling? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria if you are new here. This right here is my four-month-old daughter Charlotte. She is a cutie pie if I do say so myself. Um, she was born on October 17th, 2020. So she turns four months old on the 17th of February. So this video is going to be all about her and she's a little squirmy right now so I wonder if she'll play with her shoe. You wanna play with your shoe? What is that? <gasps> Whoa, it's your shoe? <laughs> She's very interested in that. So I think we'll get started with feeding. That's the first category. So Charlotte is exclusively breastfed. So, I mean, other than the occasional bottle here and there to um, supplement her, but it's breast milk that we feed her in the bottle too. But she does occasionally get a bottle. Um, sometimes like if Brendan has to feed her, if I'm not home, she'll get a bottle or if for some reason my supply is down at, or Charlotte's more hungry than usual, she'll get a bottle. You wanna play with this one? There you go, oh. Oh, yucky. Oh, wanna chew on that one? Or do you wanna suck on that one? Oh, she getting mad. So we've had a few, I'm just checking my phone for my notes here. We have had a few different issues with breastfeeding. Um, and that's not to say that breastfeeding is super difficult for us because it's not the worst by far. Like I have a good supply now because I'm on Domperidone and we see um, an international board certified lactation consultant or an, I don't even know what the acronym for that is. IBCLC? IBCLC? Yes. Is that what it is? I think so. <laughs> um, so we see one of those and then we also um, see a speech language pathologist which in my last video I touched on. So we've only seen the speech language pathologist the one time and we're going back not this week, but next week. Um, so I'll update you guys on anything we learn in that. But what they said was actually that the soother we were using was accentuating her high palate. So that's one of the issues we've been having with nursing is that she does have a high palate, which isn't great, but that we switched to the, it, I think it's Itsy Ritzy. Is that what this one is? My sister bought them for us actually before we even knew that she had any, t um, any nursing issues. So ugh. the problem is though, she can't keep them in her mouth because of her latch. It's hard for her to keep suction for long periods of time. So often when we're nursing too, she lets go very frequently. Should I get you a teether? Where are all your teethers at? Here, wait. There. Speaking of teething, <laughs> Charlotte is teething very badly. Like she has had a few rough days now. Um, and my baby who usually sleeps through the night is now up at least once a night. So. That's in the sleeping category. I'll touch on that after. But um, for feeding, she's doing pretty well. She's gaining weight really well too. Um, she's stuck to the 15th percentile pretty closely this whole way. So they're not concerned about her weight at all. Um, in the beginning, she did drop down a little more than 10% um, of her body weight. So she was born seven pounds, eight ounces, and she dropped down to six pounds something, I think. Um, but that's pretty normal. They were a little bit concerned. We did give her formula one time, um, and she projectile vomited everywhere. It was rough. So we learned she's allergic to cow's milk, which is, um, what most formula is made out of. Ow, you're scratching me. She has had a little bit of nursing trouble, but she's been getting a lot better recently, especially after we saw the lactation consultant. Things got a lot better because I got put on Domperidone. My supply increased pretty dramatically, and um, now she is full every time we feed, which is good. Uh, for a little while there, she was getting really fussy, but she's getting a little bit better now. You might hear her all slobbery. Yeah, she's chewing on my finger inside the soother. So Charlotte is a little bit over 12 pounds, I think, now. I'm not sure. She hasn't been weighed in a couple weeks, but when we go back to the... Uh, speech language pathologist she'll be weighed. So one thing that she's doing, which will actually lead into the sleeping category as well, is that she really wants to nurse to sleep. And that is a habit I 
I mean, I enjoy nursing her to sleep. I have no problems with it, but I don't want it to affect her sleep long term. And I've heard and researched this a little bit, and I've heard that it can actually cause them to be very dependent on needing to nurse before they can sleep. So I just want to eliminate habits like that before they even get started. I mean, I don't have an issue with it right now because it's a comfort thing for her, but again, if once you start, it's hard to stop. So I've kind of been making sure that she's maybe stripped down when we're nursing just so she doesn't fall asleep as easily. Um, making sure to feed her after naps is something I'm trying to do now rather than feeding her before a nap. So if I feed her after we play, before she goes down for a nap, it's a little harder for her to go to sleep on her own. And also because she has reflux, it's harder for her in general to go to sleep right after she eats. Because I can't burp her and then she spits up and then she wakes up and then she has some stomach acid issues. Girly, you're all drooly. <laughs> what? Oh, you're being fuzzy. Okay, mommy will get you a tea bag. And now let's talk about sleep. So Charlotte is an amazing sleeper. I'm very lucky for this. She has been sleeping through the night since she was about two weeks old. And before that she was waking twice maybe in the night, every four-ish hours. Um, at the time I was trying to wake her up specifically every four hours so that I could feed her because she hadn't been putting on enough weight at the time. But once she was about two weeks old, she was back up to her birth weight and our doctor cleared us to do on-demand feeding, which is what I have been doing. So that's basically, I let her lead. She gives me cues for when she's hungry. And if she goes longer than four hours without eating during the day, I usually wake her or make sure that she's eaten. And it goes pretty well for us. Um, right now she's going through the sleep regression, the four month sleep regression. Big old tutor. The four month sleep regression. It's been pretty good. I'm not mad about it. It's maybe one time in the night that she'll wake up. It's pretty decent so far. Um, I haven't had any difficulties with it because I usually wake up once in the night to pump because I notice that if I'm not pumping in the night, then my supply goes down pretty dramatically. So if I go the night without pumping, my supply tanks. So I have to wake up at least around four, anywhere between three and five, which actually happens to be when she wakes up. So um, I will wake up around the same time she does and then we nurse and then I go back to bed. So does she, she doesn't have troubles falling back to sleep, which is good. Now that Charlotte is four months old, one thing that we are trying to implement sort of is a little bit of sleep training and nothing like cry it out or anything like that. I kind of decided that's not really what we want to do unless we end up having to use it. Um, I just want to be a little more gentle than that. <laughs> Hi. I want to be a little more gentle than that. Not to say that if you're doing that, anything's wrong. You do what's right for your family. This is what I think might be right for ours. Someone on my Instagram mentioned the French sleep training and I'm sort of looking into that right now. Not super sure what we're going to use yet, but basically I've just been trying to very gently lead her into scheduled nap times. We don't really need the help at night. She's a very good sleeper, but uh, during nap times, that's the only thing is that we haven't really had scheduled naps yet or scheduled wake times or been keeping track of them too much. She, she has a, her own bit of a schedule, but nowadays she's getting a little bit older and it's obvious that she gets bored easier. Which way does this toe go? There we go. It's obvious that she gets bored um, a little bit easier. So I'm trying to keep her entertained in some ways. And in other ways, I'm also just letting her sort of have some space to explore and learn a little bit. Nap time has to be a little bit scheduled for us nowadays um, or else I find that the day just kind of gets away from us and I can't really keep track of when she's sleeping as easily and I'd like to sort of keep an idea of how tired she is and it's hard for me when everything's sort of here and there and not on a schedule. I work better on a schedule. I don't know how she will do, but we'll play it by ear. All right, so next category is cloth diapering. So <laughs> we use cloth diapers. I have sort of briefly mentioned this in a couple of different videos, I think. I mean, I made a video about cloth diapers and I make them, but we ordered from Nora's Nursery actually recently and they, they arrived. So we've been trying those out. And if you guys want me to review Nora's Nursery diapers, I can do that. Just let me know in the comments down below if you want to hear about it. I'm not sure if you, some of you are here for like more motherhood content, more DIY content, but 
I will do all of it. That's what I like to do. So I want to know what you guys think about cloth diapering and if you want to hear my thoughts. So leave them down there. So yes, we are using pocket style diapers and she is mostly using those now. On occasion, if we, because we only get to use our washing machine twice a week, if we're out of cloth diapers and it's not our laundry day yet, we will use some of the Kirkland, I'll show you, just like the Costco disposable diapers, but we hardly ever use those. Like in a week, I think we'd probably use five of them just in a pinch. And that to me is a lot better than the amount we'd be using otherwise. And I'm more into cloth diapering for the sustainable aspect, not necessarily the money saving aspect, although that is awesome. But the sustainability side is more what I'm interested in. I don't like the idea of landfills being filled with diapers, not to, and I'm not saying, <laughs> sorry, I always feel like I'm offending people the second I state an opinion. I'm not here to say that the way you're doing things is wrong, but this is just what works for us. One thing that we got in the world of cloth diapering is we got a toilet sprayer and I talked about it in a vlog and honestly, it is amazing. This thing helps so much with, um, I noticed like a decline in how much diapers stain, how much our pail stinks. <laughs> it is awesome. We switched to using the diaper genie thing that we have now. I, I don't think it's like a decor one. It's not actually a diaper genie. It's a different brand but we have reusable bags for it and that's what we use for putting <laughs> for putting all the cloth diapers in and then I take it down to the washing machine and wash it twice a week. It's really awesome though. I love the toilet sprayer. It really helps get all the poop off, which is a little gross for some people, but I think that it's awesome. Less poop you have to touch, less stink, and it helps with staining like so, 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 so much, honestly. Next category is playing and learning. So this has been the biggest like learning curve, <laughs> I guess so far. It's been the biggest thing for Charlotte the last two months, really. She's made huge strides. So Charlotte has found her hands, which is good, awesome news. She constantly has her hands in her mouth, which will help develop her um, immune system, which is good, but also it helps her learning. So something I learned recently is that babies have a lot of like a mouth learning to do. They taste things and learn via like, textures and <laughs> chewing and things like that. I didn't know that. Our speech language pathologist actually kind of informed me of that. I mean, I knew that they learned things from chewing on stuff, but not to the extent that they do. It's crazy. It's really cool information. So Charlotte has been sticking everything in her mouth because she's teething and she really has a lot of fun with grabbing things now, including this little bell thing that used to be Olivia's. Olivia's my niece. This used to be hers and Charlotte loves it. If she catches her fingers in it, which sometimes she can. Oh, she almost got it. There we go. You'll hear it ring along. Oh, she dropped it. Anyway, <laughs> so she has been learning a lot. She loves to interact with her little baby gym now. So she'll try to grab at the toys and she's actually tried to pull them into her mouth a couple of times. But one thing is she does get frustrated with them pretty easily if they don't do what she wants. Um, which is good because she's learning. She's learning what she wants and what she's trying to interact with. You know, she's trying to manipulate things, which is good. Right now she is teething and she is chewing on this little teether. <sighs> Careful, there we go. And she's covered in drool here. Look at this. <laughs> she's really chewing on this one. You learning lots? Are you learning a lot? She is getting better at sitting. I've been trying to encourage her to sit like um usually i think when babies this young sit they stretch out and go really straight like a board like she always does that but i've been doing what embers and ash actually suggested um ashley on her channel and it's putting pressure behind their shoulder blades so when she tries to straighten out like that i just put a little bit of pressure on her and lean her forward slightly and i find that she actually gets quite comfortable like that which is good teaching her to use those core muscles we do also do tummy time. Um, I try to do about 30 minutes of tummy time a day. I kind of use the like exercise rule. Like you should usually get about 30 minutes of exercise a day. I don't know why I chose that, but that's what I've been doing. Um, and she gets about that much and it's helped her learn a lot about rolling and seeing things from a different perspective. So that's one thing that happens is she gets a little bit fed up with playtime. 
and she gets a little bit cranky when she's tired, but I feel like that's most baby. Oh, you okay? You okay? That's most babies for you. And she gets very cuddly when she's sleepy. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. I got you. I got you. Anyway, that is an update on Charlotte. She is doing very well, very healthy, four month old. Um, <laughs> If you guys want to follow along with her development and her growing, then make sure to stick around, subscribe, share, like, comment, do all the stuff, and I will see you in another video on Thursday. Bye.